Hello, my name is Julia Torte. I'm one of the field service specialists from the Kansas School for the Blind. Today we are going to talk about object calendar systems. A calendar is defined as a method to set the divisions of a day, week, month, and year, and set the beginning and ending of an event. We use calendars regularly to organize our lives and mark our daily home, work or school schedules, and special events or holidays. Typically, calendars are visual in nature, but not everyone can access a visual calendar system. So I would like to introduce you to the object calendar system developed by Dr. Jan van Dyke for students who are deafblind. Think of the visual schedules often provided in schools for students with additional disabilities. Those visual schedules often contain pictures that a student with a visual impairment may not see effectively. The object calendar system is basically replacing those pictures with objects, but provides guidance on the careful selection of objects to meet the needs of a tactual learner. I hope this presentation will assist your team in developing an effective object calendar system for your student. So let's get started. For the purpose of, of this presentation, I'm going to describe a system that will support students in one of these categories. Students who are nonverbal and have limited ways to communicate their wants and needs or students who have emerging communication skills, but are at the concrete representation level. That is, they do not use symbolic language forms, such as print or braille. And finally, to support students who have difficulty transitioning between activities. This student may have communication, but have difficulty transitioning from one activity to the next. The purpose of an object calendar system is to bring structure and order to a student's day. When a student has a vision loss and additional disabilities, they may miss the natural cues in the environment to anticipate what is coming next in their schedule, prepare for changes in their routine, or notice when an individual is going to initiate a conversation or an activity with them. Ultimately, the object calendar system provides a way to increase interactions, facilitate conversations about daily activities and routines, and provide the student with decision-making opportunities. It is important to determine how the calendar will mark time based on your student's individual needs. The design of the calendar's timepiece can be set up as an anticipation calendar, a daily calendar, or longer, such as monthly, yearly, weekly, and so on. An anticipation timepiece provides a way to tell the student that a new activity is about to begin. It is a very basic timepiece for students who need to know or can only process what is happening right now. To show this type of timepiece, I have a couple of pictures on the slide for you. The first picture is a white round colander with a 3 inch soft toy basketball inside. The basket is used to say, we will now go to PE. The red basket pictured here is where the basket ball will go when finished with PE, as if to say to the student, we are now done with PE. A daily timepiece provides a way to tell the student what is happening for the next two or more activities. Some students can't comprehend an entire day, so the timepiece can mark the next two or more activities, even including the whole entire day. To help represent this, I have a picture on the screen that contains five rectangular baskets with an object inside each basket. From left to right, the objects are a book, a beauty travel bag, headphones, fish food, a pencil box, and a spoon. The expanded timepiece is to tell the student to schedule on a weekly, monthly, and yearly basis. When a student starts asking about events happening in the future, say a week or a month out, this additional calendar can be added. To show this, I added a photograph from the Texas School for the Blind showing a large monthly calendar with one small tactual abstract symbol attached to each day. A ribbon is used to cover the finished weekly activities. There are several options on the design of the object calendar system to use with your student, but the big picture to keep in mind is the system needs to take into account the student's sensory needs. How much can the child see or hear? If the student is getting services from a teacher of students with visual impairments and or an educator for the deaf, you might want to consult their expertise. Also, you might want to consider the student's physical needs. Does a student use a wheelchair or a walker? The timepiece will need to be created in a way that provides your student the best opportunity 
to easily access and manipulate the system. You may want to consult with the child's occupational therapist or physical therapist. Another feature that you need to consider is how durable and portable the timepiece will need to be. Elementary students do not travel from class to class on an hourly basis, but middle and high school students often do, and so we'll need a more portable system. Another factor is, is the location of the timepiece accessible to your student. It needs to be in an area of the classroom accessible at all times. The student has to be able to go to the calendar, retrieve an object, and then place that item in a finish box, which we'll, we'll talk about later. If the student is in a wheelchair, this system has to be low enough that they can reach the object himself. Now let's talk about the objects themselves. Students will need objects to represent every activity in their day, so it is very important to understand the factors to consider when selecting objects. There is a suggested hierarchy of tactile skills, from real concrete objects to abject, abstract symbols, such as Braille or tactile symbols used at the Texas School for the Blind. When initially selecting items, it is suggested that we start with the actual, actual objects being used during the activity. To describe this a bit more, I have added a picture of an object to represent each step of the hierarchy. For the real object, I have a picture of a cartridge from the Joy Player available from APH. These cartridges are similar to the ones, for <clears throat> ones used from the Talking Book Library. As the student moves through the hierarchy, the next step is to have a second copy of the object. This is so one object is used within the calendar routine and the other is used during the activity. So a second cartridge for the Joy Player would be needed. The next step in the hierarchy is to find or make an object that is similar to or shares features with the object used in the activity. The photo on the slide shows a cutout piece of plastic with a hole added to one side. It is similar in size and rectangular shape, but thinner. It is also blue instead of green. If two feature changes would be difficult for a student, I could have found a plastic in similar color to the green cartridge. The next level of the hierarchy is to use a part of the object. For this example, I cut the, cut the similar object made from plastic in half, keeping the section with the hole for the actual calendar. Now the tactile object is small and could be used in a portable tactile calendar system. If the student is ready to learn a more abstract tactile sim symbol system, it can be created and added to or paired with the partial object symbol. This will help the student transition to a more abstract form of object calendar system if your educational team determines that the student is ready. As stated earlier, selecting objects is based on the individual student needs. For the purposes of this presentation, I selected objects for a student who is at the concrete level of learning and has a significant visual impairment, so parts of objects and pictures or photographs based systems will not be adequate. The main points to remember about object systems for this student is that we need to initially use real objects that will act as a tactual reference to the activity and will actually be used during the activity. Basically, the objects need to be meaningful to the student and have a clear, tactual, understandable relationship to the activity itself. Let me show you some possible choices we might make when selecting an appropriate object. Let's say we have a classroom chore of feeding the fish. Look at the photos in this slide and decide which object would meet the criteria we talked about. A stuffed blue fish with shiny scales on his back, a container of goldfish food, or a plastic fish with green and yellow polka dots? Well, the answer is the container of fish food because that's what the student is actually going to experience. They will hold the container when sprinkling it into the fish tank. Even if we get a real live fish, that would not be appropriate because it's not what the student would actually be experiencing when they fed the fish. We can visually see the fish and conceptually connect that with feeding fish, but not all of our students can make that connection. They need something that is really being used within the activity, and that's what the fish food represents. Let's look at another example. Let's say we have a time for listening to music. Which one would we use? A toy smartphone, headphones, or a CD? We would probably use the headphones because that's what the student is actually going to use, touch, and put on her head to listen to the music. The music may come from a smartphone, but the student may not touch that tool. 
the CD may work if the student would touch the CD and put it into the player. Let's look at one final example. What if we have a get ready activity where the student will comb her hair? Would we use a small handheld mirror, a blue plastic doll brush, or a regular white comb? This one can be a bit tricky. We can rule out the plastic toy brush because it is significantly smaller, probably for a Barbie doll, and the student won't use it when she's actually combing her hair. But what about the mirror or the comb? If you are actually using a handheld mirror in the get ready routine, that would be okay. But if you are doing this in front of a wall mirror or in the restroom, then it wouldn't be. Also, a child who is very significantly visually impaired may not ever use a mirror. So without additional information, the comb is the best option. Before moving on, I want to say a few things about miniatures. It is very tempting to use miniatures when developing an object calendar system because they are small, they can be attached to cards or put into a smaller portable timepiece. However, miniatures can be problematic for children with a visual impairment because they do not tactually or visually represent the real objects. As a result, the miniature will hold no meaning for the student. For example, a small plastic school bus will not feel like the bus the student rides to and from school. The miniature bus may feel like a small piece of plastic with some curves and bumps on it. When riding the bus, the student may feel metal from the handrail when walking up the steps, or vinyl from the seats, or webbing from the seat belt. Any of those items would provide a more relevant reference to the actual activity of riding the bus. Even if it is moving from full real objects to a partial object on the hierarchy. When first beginning an object calendar system, it is critical to develop a routine for using the timepiece. I will provide an example here, but it may need to be altered slightly based on your student's individual needs. The first step is to list out the student's activities, then identify one object for each activity. Now for some sample routine. First, make sure the student has a clear understanding of when to check the calendar. Provide an anchor such as the phrase, let's check our calendar. After the anchor phrase, go to the calendar, find the first symbol. If the student needs help, please remember to use hand under hand technique to assist him. Then name the activity, say music time, for example. Please take time to chat about the activity. What is your favorite song? Do you want to hear this or that song today? Now go and complete the activity. When finished, take the object back to the timepiece area. Chat again about the activity. For example, did you listen to a new song? Did you share a song with a friend? If yes, who? The final and very important part of the calendar system is to document when the activity is over. So the student will put the object in a finished basket. So the routine needs to have a clear beginning, a standardized sequence, for the activity, and then a clear ending. Please remember to establish the routine, especially in the beginning, it needs to be followed in the same order, the same way, with the same words, the same prompts, at the same pace, with the same ending, each and every time, until the student understands it fully. Let's take a look at the routine in practice. First, I have a photo of a sample calendar. It is made up of six white plastic rectangular baskets with about a two and a half inch depth. The baskets are placed in a row connected by the long sides. A large red plastic bowl is set at the end of the row. The picture shows the objects neatly placed into each basket, but I may begin the day with all of the objects in front of the basket, depending on my student's abilities. If the imaginary elementary age student who this calendar is made for can handle a daily calendar system of four to six objects, or more, we can pick up, label, and talk about each object through voice or sign and put each object into the appropriate basket based on the order of the activities. The objects in the basket are Basket 1, a book called Pete the Cat at the Beach. Basket 2, a black makeup travel bag. Basket 3, a soft, squishy 3-inch orange and black toy basketball. Basket 4, a hand pump soap dispenser. Basket 5, a purple pencil box, basket six, a napkin or washcloth. Now I'll take you through each object. If the first thing in the morning, a child in early elementary has reading time, this Pete the Cat book may represent the activity of reading. Notice the small orange clip with the book. This could be included if the student's practicing turning pages or 
for students who do not have the fine motor skills to turn the pages with their fingers alone. After locating and talking about the book, place it in the first basket. At first it may be necessary to use the book that is in the timepiece, but as the child begins to grow in understanding the calendar concept, a general book possibly could be used. Next, we may have a get ready time. We get the travel bag that holds items during the activity. The photo shows the objects inside the travel bag, a washcloth, toothbrush, toothpaste, and lotion. The bag itself becomes the object symbol that represents getting ready, and we can put that into the second basket. The next activity could be physical education, and I have a ball as an object symbol. Place that in the third basket. Now the ball typically isn't used during every PE class, which can be problematic. So it is recommended that we use the ball for the first minute, then participate in the PE class with peers, then play with the ball again for the last minute of the class to help the student make the connection between the object and the activity. This is a way to use an object in a class where there are so many different kinds of activities going on that we could never find one object that could be consistent every day, so we just create one. The fourth activity could be a bathroom break. We might use a soap dispenser bottle for this one. Depending on the student, wet wipes or a diaper are possible options, but for an older student it may be more age appropriate to use the hand soap, the hand soap dispenser and it would go in the fourth basket. In the fifth slot, we could have a pencil box. This could be used in a classroom that has centers, like an early childhood room, an early elementary grade, or a self-contained room. The photo shows that inside this pencil block box is a block that would represent the block area, a small car that represents the transportation area, a toy plate that represents the kitchen area, and a fancy pink glove that might represent the dress-up area and a crayon that could represent the art area. Once the student gets the box, then they can make choices about which center they want to go to. What's good about this is if the child has all these choices and always goes to the dress-up center and you really want them to develop some fine motor skills, take the rest of the items out but leave the crayon in the blocks. We still have the pencil box as a symbol but now they have only two choices. The last example is lunch. Now if your student does eat lunch with a spoon, then you could have a spoon as the symbol. But if your student is fed using a tube, then a spoon would not be appropriate. Think about something that your student would experience. Maybe the actual tube. There are students who actually get excited when they see the tube because they relate that to being fed. Another idea can be the can of formula, if you use formula. Whatever it is, it has to be something that the student really experiences. If you use a napkin to wipe up around the tube in case there are spills, that napkin could be the symbol. For this calendar system, I selected a napkin and put it in the last basket. The photo on this slide shows an accommodation made for the student's visual needs. If I put the white napkin in the white basket, many children with a visual impairment would probably not be able to see it. This would make it difficult for the student to locate or even notice an object in the basket. To fix this issue, I used black liner to create contrast. I also could have used uh, a different colored napkin. Keep this in mind when you are building your object calendar system. So that is an example of a completed morning calendar box. Now I want to share a possible strategy on how to teach object representation through planning the child's day. When at the calendar, I could say something like this. It's time to schedule your day. Then place two objects, for example the book and the ball, in front of the student. Let the student touch both objects and ask which object means time for reading. If needed, help the student using hand-under-hand -hand technique to select and pick up the book and place it in the calendar system. Now, some students will do this right away, and others need instruction because they may not have the tactile discrimination skills to decide which is which. They may need instruction in knowing how to tactually explore and know what details make something look like a book. Then likewise, they may need instruction knowing where to place the book, so then I would say, that's right, the first thing in the morning, you go to reading, and the book tells you it's in the reading time. It goes into the first basket. So now they have to go to the next activity, and I could say, after reading, you will comb your hair and get ready. And again, I could say, 
Now look at the objects, a soap dispenser and a travel bag. Choose the one that means we are going to get ready. Based on each student, student's level of support, the bag is selected and put into the second basket. I want to make a note here that it is okay to say look even if the student will tactually explore them. The word look can be used to mean examine. For the next basket, I could place the ball in the pencil box in front of the student. Then I might say, okay, the next thing you will go to is PE. Find the object that means PE. The student may look at both items, pick up the ball, and put it in the box. This continues until the boxes are filled. So you kind of get the idea of how this routine works. This type of planning the day activity can be used each time a selection of objects is placed into the daily calendar, whether that is two or more objects, the morning routine, the afternoon routine, or a full day. Sometimes a student is moved from place to place and given objects or had them taken away without really understanding the reason or purpose behind the movement, exploration, or exchange. The reason for the calendar object system is to help the student understand that there is structure, order, and purpose for their activities. When the student gets finished with the planning their day routine, they will go through their day using the object calendar system. Practice this routine daily to support the student's understanding of how the object symbols represent daily activities. The routine can be simple, but keep in mind the things that we talked about earlier by maintaining the routine in a systematic sequence in the same way each time. But here's an example. I can say, okay, so the first thing we're going to do today is reading. Get the object that means reading. After getting the book, they go to reading where they experience the book. When the reading activity is finished, they go back to the calendar and put the book into the finish box. When they finish putting it into the finish box, they then go to the next object. The student is encouraged to do this routine for each activity until the calendar tray is empty. Then the planning your schedule routine can begin again if the school day is not yet finished. As you can see in the photo, the book is placed inside the red finish basket, but the rest of the objects remain in place. As a child goes through their day, the photo shows that only the last item, the napkin, is in a basket, and the finished box is almost full. Now I want to say a few things about finished boxes. Finished boxes need to be clearly different than the baskets used to hold the objects. Some people use a shoe box, a bowl, a tin can, or some other type of plastic container that is different in shape or feel to the other dividers used in the timepiece. How this is set up will be based on your student's individual needs. Just make sure that the finish box is clearly different, represents done or finished for the student, and is used consistently. This step does help students who have difficulty with transitions. The photo shows the six white baskets with objects lined up in a row. From left to right, the objects are Pete the Cat Book, Makeup Bag, Orange Ball, Soap Dispenser, Pencil Box, and Napkin. A large tin bucket with a distinctive sound is used for the finished bucket. Some people use just one finished box, but as students gain skill and understanding with their calendar, a teacher may like to add teaching the, se the skill of self-evaluation. To do this, we will need to have two different kinds of finished boxes. One could be a cardboard shoe box with or without soft material, such as a pillow inside. The other could be a tin box of some sort. In the photo, you can see that I have a cardboard box with a towel inside and a tin bucket. Some kids are very motivated by the sound from the tin box. The cardboard box may not be as motivating because the sound is muffled, but this is okay because the tin box can mean the student successfully completed the task and the cardboard box can mean that the student needs more practice. At the end of each activity, the teacher and the student can talk about how the student did with the activity. The teacher could ask, how well did you do today with reading the book? The student could answer yes or no verbally or shake his or her head yes or no. It must be very clear what the student did well and what it means for the student that needs more practice. Examples could be that the student listened to the book and answered one question or turned the pages of the book with verbal support and not physical support or listened to the book with no irrelevant side conversations until the story was finished. Students will probably need help to know which finished box to put the object symbol into while learning this skill. 
Some students may want to always put the object into the finished box that makes the noise, but this will be a part of the learning process when talking about what went well and what can be improved next time. Please note that if a student has an aversion to the sound of the finished box, find a different one that won't interfere with the learning process. The good thing about this system is that at the end of the day, no matter who did the activities with the student, they can tell which activities went well and which did not. The first photo on this slide shows the calendar system at the start of the routine. Each basket has an object and both finished boxes are empty. The second photo shows that all the baskets are empty. The, Pete the cat book is in the needs improvement box and the rest of the objects are in the did well tin bucket. A teacher could easily keep track of this information and look for patterns in the child's interactions, skill level, behaviors, or areas that might need accommodations. So this is some basic information about object calendar systems. Please remember that this presentation only covered information on one way to complete the calendar system. There are many ways to create the timepiece to meet individual student needs. For example, some students can benefit from image or pictures. Others need a combination of objects and images. In addition, depending on the age of the student, some will need a very portable system. Some need them to be adapted for students in wheelchairs or using walkers. If you want further assistance with building and creating an object calendar system for your individual student or students, please contact the Kansas School for the Blind Field Services Office and or the Field Service Specialist for your region.